Today we are in our science textbook, chapter two, more evidence of earth shaping processes. So our big question for this chapter is, what evidence shows that Earth's surface has changed over time? Over millions of years, layers of sediment eventually became solid rock. Then some of it eroded away. The rust lead landforms of Monument Valley in Arizona are amazing to see. So that's what they're showing in this picture. These structures are called buttes and are made of different types of rocks. When people first came across these buttes, they wondered how they formed. They asked many questions. Why are there different kinds of rocks stacked in matching layers from one butte to another? Did these formations always look like this? Geologists look at the types of rocks that are present in an area to figure out how Earth's surface has changed and how it might change in the future. Monument Valley's buttes are evidence that the valley was not always there. The different layers are evidence of the types of rocks that completely filled the valley long ago. So now let's talk about sedimentary, igneous, and metamorphic rock. Geologists study rocks to understand Earth's history. Geologists categorize types of rocks based on patterns. These patterns tell how the rocks formed in the past. Okay, so our first type of rock is sedimentary rock. Okay, that's rock made of sediment that has been compacted together. So sedimentary rock is made of sediment. That's bits and pieces of rock compacted together. Sediment settles out of water, is deposited by wind, or is moved by glaciers. Glaciers, remember, are huge pieces of ice that shift along Earth's surface. One example of sedimentary rock is sandstone. It is made of sand grains that are cemented together by pressure. Another type of sedimentary rock is shale, which is made of very tiny compacted sediment grains. Layers of sedimentary rock tend to form in places where wind, ice, or water break down larger pieces of rock into smaller pieces. So in Northwest Arkansas, we have a lot of sandstone and shale in our mountains. A lot of times if you find rocks in Northwest Arkansas that kind of look like they twinkle in the light or they feel kind of sandy, that is usually sandstone. And then we also have a lot of shale and if you drive to say Bella Vista, and if you look on the side of the highway going to Bella Vista, you might see some black crumbly looking rock, that's shale, okay? So just be on the lookout because we do have a lot of sedimentary rock in this area. Here's a picture of um, some of the, our Rocky Mountains to the west of us. Long ago, the Rocky Mountains were larger than they are now. They began to break down. The sediments were carried away by water, wind, and glaciers. The rock that comes from Earth's interior and is cooled is called igneous rock. There are different ways for igneous rock to form. One way is when molten lava erupts from a volcano. Other igneous rocks form when magma intrudes into Earth's crust, but it remains stuck there under pressure. The slower cooling process makes different patterns of minerals that show up as visible grains. So granite is an example of an igneous rock formed this way. And many of our houses have granite countertops that's granite rock, okay? It's an igneous rock that's granite with different types of minerals in it. And here's some more examples, some pictures. Minerals and lava crystallize in different ways depending on the temperature. So this explains the variety of igneous rocks. All of these that you see here are igneous rocks. 
both igneous and sedimentary rocks can change into a third type of rock called metamorphic rock. This occurs when heat and pressure change those rocks into a different form. Marble is an example of a metamorphic rock. Some kitchen countertops can be made of marble. Okay, they're usually like swirly looking, okay? So your vocabulary here, igneous rock is rock made of magma or lava that has cooled and hardened. Remember it's magma when it's inside Earth's crust. So if it's formed inside Earth's crust um, out of magma, it's igneous rock. But also if that lava has, or the magma has come out and become lava on outside of Earth's crust where we can see it, right? And it's cooled and hardened, that can also be igneous rock. Metamorphic rock, Right, if something morphs into something else, it's gone from one form and changed into another form. Okay, so metamorphic rock is rock that forms when igneous or sedimentary rock has been placed under tremendous heat or pressure. So either it's extremely hot and it's changed the form of the rock to metamorphic, or it's under so much pressure within the earth that it's changed its form to metamorphic rock. So marble was once a sedimentary rock called limestone. And then over time, it's changed from that heat and pressure to what we call marble. And marble is frequently what we use for statues. Okay. They're like usually like a white or cream color statues are. And those are made of marble. Fossils are often found in sedimentary rocks. That's why in Northwest Arkansas, we can find so many fossils in our rocks because those rocks are sedimentary. Throughout the middle of the United States, the fossils of sea creatures have been found. These are often found in deserts or very dry areas far from the nearest ocean. Why are the fossils of sea creatures found in such places? So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, okay? And I'll pull up this map so that we can see very clearly, whoops, I went a little too far. Let's do this, okay? Here is the United States. I'm trying to get it so you can see really close up this map of the United States. Because right here where my pointer is, is where we are. That is Northwest Arkansas, okay? And we're in that pinkish colored area, okay? So let me zoom back out. Get back to where we need to be here. A little bit farther, okay? So, one more zoom out. North America looked very different 75 million years ago. Only those tan areas, or this pinkish on the computer, pinkish tan, only those areas were exposed land. Okay, geologists explain the discovery of these fossils this way. The central part of what is now the United States was actually covered by a large sea 75 million years ago. The sediment that accumulated at the bottom of the sea became sedimentary rock. Some of the organisms that died in the water left remains that settled into the sediment. Sediment moved by wind and water became layered on top of the dead organisms. Their fossils can be found in sedimentary rock today in states far from the ocean, such as Montana and South Dakota. So Montana, in South Dakota are up here, okay? Remember the buttes of Monument Valley, Arizona? Well, each butte is made up of layers of rock laid down at different times. Different buttes sometimes have the same layers running through them. At one time, the buttes were all part of a single strip of land. Over time, Forces wore parts of the rock away, leaving the buttes behind. Then, some of the buttes wore away at different rates than others. 
Examine the butte in the picture. What do you see? Notice how similar the rock layers are in each. Both buttes have layers with the same thickness and color. That's because they were once a single strip of land. So see like this dark purple looking area going across? They were all once a single strip of land. And over time, weather has worn away the part between them, leaving individual buttes. So all this where you can see the sky kind of between these buttes. These aren't, I mean, they look like mountains to you when you're standing there, right? But these aren't mountains that pushed up. No, they're buttes because the area in between them has washed away over time from weather. When geologists find similar types of rock in two different locations, they can draw conclusions about what happened to make the different locations look so similar. The Appalachian Mountains in North America and the Caledonian Mountains which are scattered across the northern part of the British Isles in Scandinavia, have identical rock types and overall shapes. So what could cause this to happen? So here's the Caledonian Mountains. They're up here, right? And here's the British Isles. And the Appalachian Mountains are over here on the eastern coast of the United States. What evidence about the mountains would you see if you could slide North America and the northern part of Europe closer together? Well, Alfred Wegener wondered the same thing. He examined rock types and landforms in different locations around North America, Africa, and Europe. The mountains of these now distant locations seem to match up in terms of the rock types and the continental outlines. To Wegener and other scientists, this was evidence that the mountains formed in one place and then were separated as the continents drifted apart. If two locations that are not very far apart have similar rock layers, but one location is missing one or more layers, geologists might conclude that some process has changed Earth's surface over time. So how are mountains formed? What would cause this rock to fold like this? Ooh, we've talked about this, haven't we? Folded rock, folded mountains. Okay, folded rocks are evidence of change. Some kind of force was applied to fold the once flat layers into beautiful wavy formations. As with mountain building, these forces can take thousands to millions of years to form folds. Some types of mountains form when parts of Earth's crust push against each other. Earth's plates can meet and push against each other. Both plates may be forced upward. Or one plate will slide beneath the other, pushing the top plate up. These are ways mountains form. Because Earth's plates move so slowly, it may take thousands to millions of years for mountains to form. So here's a picture that says, after these layers of sedimentary rock formed, forces caused them to fold. Much later, the plates met and pushed the top layer up, forming this mountain range. So let's look at evidence of major events. Rocks and rock layers can provide evidence of other major events that change Earth's surface. Consider this evidence from the rock layers. This is evidence of causes for the di dinosaur extinction. Dinosaur fossils have not been found in rock layers that are younger than 65 million years old. The size and different types of fossils from this period drop sharply as well. This evidence tells scientists approximately when the dinosaurs died. Okay, let's look in this middle column. A huge crater is discovered in rock layers in Mexico. Now this evidence supports the idea that a large asteroid struck Earth. The impact caused shock waves, fires, large waves, and climate change that made it difficult to live on Earth. All right, and here's another piece of evidence, iridium. Iridium is a rare element. 
It's found in abundance in layers of Earth's rocks from around the same time as the dinosaur extinction. It is more common in meteorites than in Earth's rocks. The iridium layer is evidence that a large meteorite struck Earth 65 million years ago. Evidence from the rock layers shows that most large animals on Earth died and died off in a short period of time. The large asteroid struck Earth around the same time and that dust from the impact was thrown into the atmosphere. Now, all three pieces of this evidence lead scientists to propose that a large asteroid struck Earth around 65 million years ago, which resulted in the extinction of dinosaurs. All right, and this is kind of what they're showing. Okay, this is this evidence. Look at this huge circle. This is the impact zone of this asteroid that hit. Most of this is underneath the ocean. Some of it is on land that we can see, but most of this is under the ocean where we can't see it. So what do you think happened to life on Earth immediately after this crater was created by an asteroid? So the crater is this big circle. All right. So those are the things I want you to be thinking about as you read this chapter and listen to it.